Um, our food industry uh, is uh, a high growth area uh, of our economy and the seafood processing sector is no exception. The sector has significant potential uh, to grow revenues and employment in the coming years. I have on previous occasions referred to my commitment to ensure the maximum number of jobs are created and maintained in the seafood sector and that remains strong. Um, my Food Harvest 2020 and Action Plan for, uh, for Jobs recognise that uh, most of the potential for increased employment in the seafood industry is in the areas of processing and aquaculture. Food Harvest 2020 aims to increase employment in the seafood sector as a whole from the present um, uh, approximately 11,000 people to 14,000 people by 2020 and to increase turnover from 700 million to 1 billion. Uh, the two targets uh, are part of the same ambition to grow the seafood sector and its contribution to our economy. And it was, it was the previous government th that put these targets in place uh, and we are happy to try and implement them and see them through. I think it's important to, to, uh, to note that. Despite the uh, uh, severe effects across the economy of the current economic downturn, the processing sector uh, has fared very well in terms of maintaining employment. Indeed, many progressive businesses in the processing sector have, bu have bucked the general trend in the economy and have um, uh, been on a sustained growth and expansion path. Uh, CSO figures show that seafood exports were valued at 495 million in 2011, which is an 18% increase, sorry, in 2012, which is an 18% increase over 2011. Um, just to get on to, uh, um, I am advised by, by BAM uh, that some 2,870 people are presently uh, employed in the seafood processing sector, uh, arising specifically from an investment of 12.8 million by 18 seafood processing companies in 2012, with 2.6 million in financial assistance under the Seafood Processing Business Investment Scheme. Uh, 296 additional jobs uh, and increased sales of uh, value-added seafood products uh, of nearly uh, uh, 105 million are expected to be created by 2015. Um, uh, that is a significant level of investment by any standards and together with the previous investment of 7 million by 21 companies in 2011 and 2.7 million by 8 companies in 2010, with the support of the Seafood Processing Business Investment Scheme. Um, uh, uh, this is setting a clear uh, path uh, for growth and expansion. Thank you, Minister. I, 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 I have recognised the success of the scheme by increasing its capital budget from 1.5 million in previous years to 2.5 million in, in 2013. Thank you, I know that uh, the Deputy has a specific question in terms of how we're going to prioritise those allocations, and I'll come back to that. Yeah. Yeah. Deputy Pringle. Thank you, Last Year, and thank you, Minister. Minister, I asked this question because, the, as you, you'll remember, in June 2011, you launched a high level group report for in Kelly Beggs, which outlined how 20, 250 jobs were going to be created over the following couple of years in the area uh, on the seafood process. And, but it's extremely difficult to actually uh, find out and verify whether those jobs are being created and where they're, they're actually being created as well. And it seems that from the <coughs> grant announcements that are made, that the grant announcements are linked to creating a number of jobs, but those jobs are only aspirational and they're not really, it's not really a factor in deciding on the grant. In fact, it appears that it's more likely just a nice add-on to the announcement to say that this such X announcement will create eight jobs and another one will create 10, when really and truly that's not the, fun the purpose of the grant aid, and it leads to a lot of confusion amongst the public, and there's a huge difficulty, um, <laughs> particularly in Kelly Beggs and Donegal at the moment, where workers are being paid off in factories, and people can't actually see where these jobs are being created and, and how they are being done. That. So I think there's an issue there around the transparency that needs to be addressed. On. Come on, Tara. I say that, uh, um, that the, the grant aid is given out um, on the basis of, you know, well, two criteria. One, we're trying to modernise processing in Ireland to make it more efficient, to make it more competitive, um, so that we can process more fish here. We can land more uh, fish caught by Irish trawlers and also more fish caught by foreign trawlers. Um, both of that is happening and that's evidenced by the, the export figures increasing. Um, but we are also looking to invest in, uh, uh, in facilitating the sector, um, uh, adding more value to product. Uh, and that is why this year, uh, I propose to increase the maximum grant rate available under the Seafood Processing Business um, Investment Scheme in 2013 from the previous 25% of money spent up to 30%. Uh, 
Um, at the same time, I propose to reduce the grant um, available to investments in primary processing facilities, previously from a 25% down to 20%. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to prioritise money into the added value sector, because that is actually where the jobs are, um, um, so that we can actually not only process more uh, seafood product in Ireland, but we can also add more value to it, which is what we're trying to do in beef, which is what we're trying to do in dairy, uh, um, you know, and in all of the other food sectors. Thank you, Mr. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I hope you'll welcome that. I think it is difficult to put an exact um, scheme together uh, based on the amount of jobs that will be created. Our figures in terms of growth in Killybegs and elsewhere from an employment point of view are based on um, the, the projections of the increased number of jobs attached to the investments concerned. Uh, and that's the only way you can, um, uh, you can take Come it on. forward. Deputy, briefly, uh, Deputy Prince. Thank you. Yes, I'd uh, just like to say that I would welcome the fact that the grant aid has increased for the, ad for the added value aspect of the investment because I think that that is important, all, all right, and I would welcome that, Minister, because the dilemma that we have seen in the fish processing sector, particularly in Donegal, is that the more investment you've had, actually you have less jobs, and I know the arguments around that that makes what jobs are left there more sustainable, but it's very difficult for people who are losing their jobs and then finding themselves out of work uh, because of modernisation taking place within the processes to actually see where the growth in jobs is supposed to, is supposed to come from. And I think that is a, a problem with the, the grant aid process where jobs are linked to announcements when actually the purpose of the announcement isn't to create those jobs, it's to modernise and uh, modernise uh, plant and equipment. And I think that's where the confusion arises at some points with um, the public and people who are working in the factories themselves. But I do uh, welcome the fact that the grant aid has been increased for adding value, but I do think there needs to be a focus on that adding value, building the number of jobs and, and creating Thank those you, jobs. Thank you, Deputy. Final yeah. reply, Mr. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a fair point. And, and, you know, there is a concern that when you put money into equipment around processing, that you're modernising, you're mechanising, and you're actually you're reducing the number of people working in those factories. That's the concern. Uh, but, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to ensure that we are competitive as a place to land fish and process fish and, and, and add value to fish. If you look at you know, how Killybegs benefited last year from Blue Whiting's uh, uh, landings, for example, um, you know, it, 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 it was a significant um, uh, injection into the local economy there and will continue this year, we hope. Um, but we also need to find a, a way of ensuring that instead of fish being being, being caught and landed into Ireland and simply being shipped out of Ireland by truck or by ship, um, um, uh, either frozen or chilled, um, um, and being graded and processed outside of Ireland, that actually we do, do that work here. We have the infrastructure to do it here, we have the expertise to do it here, and we need to actually continue to invest in that infrastructure to ensure that, um, uh, that, that we add value here and then we export a higher value product. And that is, I think, where where the jobs are, and I mean, Kitty Beggs would obviously be the centre of that because of its scale and size. Yeah, thank you, um, and that's why, that's why you're seeing um, a slight change in focus in terms of the emphasis of the money now being a 30% grant for added value, a 20% grant for, for general processing upgrade um, to try and encourage people down the route of added value.